welcome to the Museum of Everyone. Today I am joined by three uh, wonderful artists, um, composers and sound artists. Uh, they're part of Sleeper Town, which originated in Gorey and is now uh, currently on in Tullamore and County Offaly. Um, I'm just going to start off by giving you a brief introduction to each of the artists and then we're going to have a chat about the project itself as a whole and also talk about the individual journey that each of these artists have gone on in order to realise this work. And I, I'd like also Richard to, um, I suppose, give us all a way in uh, to how this technology works because for me, experiencing it, it, that was, it was quite a remarkable, um, magical uh, <laughs> thing to behold. So I'll start with uh, Gabby Schaffner. Uh, Gabby Schaffner works as a transdisciplinary artist within the realms of radio art, composition and performance. Her artistic practice is determined by the, method, by the methods of poetic ethnography in connection with flux-like mise-en-scenes, radio making and sound art performances. Much of her work originates from journeys. Next to her, next to her radiophonic productions, Schaffner creates a speculative musical genre and inserts them into music history in order to raise awareness of cultural, gender-related and or geographical conditions. Since 2005, Schaffner has been realizing uh, award-winning productions with Deutschland Funk Kultur, uh, Radio FM, Hessian Cultural Radio and ABC Australia. Since 2012, she maintains uh, the Dashta Radio, a nomadic transmission project that links the medium of radio to current ecological issues. Uh, so Joseph Young. Uh, Joseph is a specialist in the, binaural, in the binaural recording technique and is interested in what the contemporary soundscape can tell us about the prevailing social climate. He has exhibited and performed at Tate Modern, Tate Britain, Jerwood Hastings in the UK and also Soul Museum uh, of Art in Wall Street, New York. Um, his sound work has been broadcast by BBC Radio, Radio Papis um, and Resonance FM and is held in several permanent collections. Since 2019, Joseph has been working in Ireland as part of a practice-based PhD at Smart Lab UCD, funded by the Irish Research Council at the Colruddy Estate in County Wicklow on a research project entitled Listening to the Archive, which I'm very interested to hear more about that, um, especially with regard to its connection with the Barbizon family, the Earl of Mead, and also, I suppose, Charleville and, on all of those ideas. Um, last but not least, uh, Richard is both an artist um, in Sleeper Town, but he's also the curator and instigator of, of the project too. Um, Richard makes work uh, for galleries, museums and public spaces, hovering between the notions of representation, narrative and abstraction. Um, it ranges from large scale installation, psychological encounters and intimate listening experiences. His work has led him to make numerous listening trips to significant places for the ear. I like that bit, Richard, significant places for the ear. Mm -hmm. um, from Pythagoras' cave in Greece, the border crossing from Turkey into the EU to tracing the story of Melkorka, an ancient Irish princess across an Icelandic landscape. His work carries an intuitive depth and when exhibited draws out the relatively silent and various histories of sound making and listening. Richard lives and works in Wexford, Ireland. Uh, his work has been supported by both private and public bodies and has been exhibited internationally. His work has, ex uh, has been exhibited at MOCA, London and featured as part of Culture Ireland's national GB18 programme, which brought leading Irish art to the UK. Um, and also more recently, Richard, um, you were awarded the Platform 31 Award. Do you want to start off and tell us a little bit about that and, and how's that going for you? Yeah, um, I was delighted to get that and it came at such a crucial time when everything was kind of shut down and there was no work coming in and we, you know, we were all trying to work at home on projects. So um, I think Platform 31, it was, it's the first time that the local authorities in Ireland, I think it's the first time anyway, that they really got together nationally and put in work with the Arts Council to, I suppose, create this opportunity and secure the funding. Um, to really support the work of artists in each of their own um, administrative areas. But it, it's great. No, it's introduced me to the practices of people I never would have met 
you know, and also then we have invited speakers slash mentors um, that are giving sessions to us as well. And then obviously we get to connect with them and the whole project in itself has been, it, it, there's a project manager who, who's brilliant and helps promote all our um, work uh, nationally, really. But I think for most people, it's been really, really positive. And I hope that um, the local authorities can do it again, because I think what we've realized is, and I suppose this connects in with Sleeper Town as well in some way, that a lot of artists that we would know as maybe Dublin-based artists or uh, probably the same in the UK as London-based artists, they, they tend to have been born or live outside of the city. Yeah. So <laughs> they might just take on, I'm a Dublin-based artist after so many years or whatever. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah. but um, and so like that's one thing we definitely noticed and we're, we're kind of discussing at the moment that um, a lot of these this these great ideas, great artists, great work can actually operate and live in smaller towns or smaller communities. Um, mm. So it's 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 it's, it's good the platform that we're connecting those up in some way. Absolutely, but, um, I, I think it's interesting as well because Ireland is essentially an island off the coast of the rest of the world, you know. And I mean, it doesn't take very long to get from one end to the other, <laughs> you know. So like you know, there's there is the Dublin centric idea of you know, where a lot of the galleries and museums are. Uh, but also, yeah, you know, the, the decentralization of it, again, like, uh, I mean, I'm from Tullamore, you're from Gorey, et cetera, um, is, is paramount. And I think everyone working from home is another thing, especially over the last 18 months. Um, so tell us a little bit about Sleeper Town, Richard. Where did this idea come from? Because it's, it's a project that's really, it's probably been running now for maybe two years, three years. Where did the idea come from and, and, and uh, how did you go about uh, instigating this? Um, it really, it's been in development for years uh, in the background. So it's kind of developed at my own interests as an artist um, who's interested in sound and listening. And I worked a lot with binaural sound and I worked a lot with um, audio spotlight systems, which use ultrasonic sound. So. Uh, what they do is they help you kind of place sounds in certain areas of space, basically, um, for people to walk into and experience. So it, it was a connection between my own interests and then the interests of Open Gory, which are uh, kind of a, a community led um, arts group uh, that are based in Gory that I founded back in 2011, I think. OK, um, so. They have an interest of developing the cultural landscapes outside of the city. So basically by chatting with them and my own practice, we put our heads together and kind of Sleeper Town was born out of that. But really, I suppose the background to it was in development probably since my master's in NCD. So that's going back to maybe 2013, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, but really then when I discovered Echoes, which was the app which kind of really just allowed all this to take place, um easily and for free which is amazing um and then the first lockdown came and i just thought that was the perfect time to put out this open call um yeah i think it's it's it just uh it, with regards to the, the the project itself it's very covid safe mm -hmm. um and also the you know uh, as as awful as the the pandemic has been uh, and by all accounts it has been it's uh, opened up new avenues uh, for people to be creative or else, uh, or else alternatively pushed uh, people to assert a particular project that might have been in the pipeline for a long time. And, oh, and uh, by all accounts, sometimes giving us um, the time uh, to, mm. to look at what's been gestating and, and to give us a, uh, a space to do that. Um, just with regards to the work, uh, Gabby, your work is in uh, Tullamore train station. Mm -hmm. um, Rapids Train is, is the title of the work and there's just there's a beautiful little bit of, of, of text around it. I hope you don't mind if I if I read it just uh, for Yeah, people. please, because I can't remember what I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but it, but it, I, I think um, having yeah, experienced it, I think it's 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 quite eloquent and I think it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful uh, description. Um, mm -hmm. So playing on the sonic similarity of fast flowing 
falling waters and the sounds of trains rushing by, Rapids trains combined selected recordings of German and other international train stations with recordings of rivers, waterfalls, and oceanscape. Central to the compositions are concepts of flowing, passing by, announcements, the din of voices, steps and trolley bags, the interplay of distance and locality. Both water and rail are part of the global system of transporting goods. They are as much linked to the economy as they are to personal and sensual experience. Trains form a resounding universe Train stations, excuse me, uh, form a resounding universe with a past and presence rushing into an off-site future. Um, so that that those those that, that connection between the flow of I suppose our existence and the and the flow of water. Like, how did you come up with this idea for this soundscape? Or where was the? Um, well, it has deep roots, <laughs> um, and it's basically sort of rooted in uh, 2014. A soundscape installation which is called Music for Trains. I did for Kunstfrühling Art Spring uh, Bremen then. And uh, when I read, I came across the description of Sleeper Town and I thought the project was very sympathetic. And then I found, and I like, um, well, I like the idea of this echo geolocated mm -hmm. presentation. Uh, I quite like Ireland, though it's been centuries since I've been there. <laughs> um, I like the whole idea. I like the style of writing. And then I like this, the sense of place that was important, that was in the focus of the project, like cemeteries, train station, and so. So basically, um, I would have loved to do something with the cemetery, but... Um, I have to be there and since this project was not traveling there and being on site I said okay um, I reconnect to this train idea and when I was writing my text then 2014 for the Kunst, Kunstfrühling Bremen I, there was one um, saying or one sentence I coined and that was about it sounds in German sounds nicer it's, it's the Brandung uh, die Brandung der Rollkoffer and in English it means the surf of the trolleys oh, wow. so all these trolleys you know with all the people with the trolleys like booming through these station halls uh, that that was the thing which evoked the the, the, the thing of surf of a big wave coming, uh, of waves coming. And then, of course, uh, you have, well, and then, well, I suppose I, I, I sent to Richard my proposal, and he evidently liked the proposal, and then I started working on two, four, on four new pieces for Sleeper Town. And just by, I mean, I travel a lot, and, um, mostly by train, less by water, um, occasionally by water as well. But it seems quite evident. And also, you you say that the um, that all these well transport. It's like the vein veins in the countries, the the rivers. You know, like the veins in the in the body. I, I don't know how to express it. Like the, the the blood flows. You know, blood flows through the veins. And uh, it, it flows through the country and there you have the rivers and they all go into the sea. Uh, but they always have been ways of, you know, transporting goods and economy mm -hmm. and people. And of course, who has not ever sit by the side of a river and was streaming and also who has not ever sit by a train station and was streaming, you know, this sense of flowing of, of, and the dream of going away, of leaving this town, as you said, like, you know, bloody hell, let us just leave this village behind me and go to the big city. And, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so, and I'm always interested in my work in very, very simple things that ignite poetic 
connotations uh, or notions and connections and commotions. <laughs> I think one 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 of the the, the interplay between uh, the human made form that is the train and the the you know the the mechanics and and the technologies and all of the all of the I suppose the uses that that has juxtaposed between this kind of this very organic flow of river that in essence um, from experiencing it in within the space actually the space that that it, it inhabits within the car park is very very big. So, I mean, I was walking around and I was like, wow, this is, and I, I, it was very immersive. And it's interesting because the train in, that, in the station does just go over a bridge. Just there's a little, there's yeah. a little river there that there's a little yeah. intersection there. Yeah. And it grounded me very much within my understanding of the geography of where I was. Um, and yeah, I felt it, it, it resonated really beautifully. It's the kind of work you could spend quite a lot of time with. You know, oh, also, yeah. nobody really knew the work was there at that point. I was just walking around the car park um, um, and people were probably thinking, who's this guy just walking around the car park, just like, you know, weaving yeah. in the cars. Did you, did you lose orientation? I mean, I would be interesting. Did you watch other people listening to the stuff and the way how they navigate in the station? Do they navigate differently or? Yeah, people do. But also sometimes it depends on uh, how busy the car park is mm -hmm. um, so you know there's the there's the it it's it can be interfered with with regards to how uh, some, like when i was there the car park was almost well it wasn't completely empty but it, mm -hmm. it allowed us but well, there's a there's a couple of us um you know kind of navigate the space and you know get really lost in in the work mm -hmm. and again for me it's a familiar territory because it's my hometown but it it transformed um the space to to yeah to i don't know it just really kind of it was extraordinarily arresting um it was very conscious of the space that it was in but also kind of you know transported me somewhere else um you're not lying you're you're no, honestly, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, was, no. but also it was that when i went down that was my first time to to visit my parents uh probably yeah. in a year or two and when i got off the train i that was the first thing that we had done so we, yeah, I think it was, I was in an emotional headspace when I was, mm. when I was there too, but no, it, it was works really, really well. In yeah, Tullamore. it does. Yeah. Um, from my experience of it as well, um, especially that piece in the car park, yeah. the size of that car park is just huge. Yeah. Um, and I don't know what way, but you do get lost in it, lost in it, yeah. listening to it. And it, I think because, the car park is kind of open on both sides. You get this airiness to the yeah. sound. It's it's a really strange experience. Um, mm. And then also when you go into the, I was stopped the first time I was there by because <laughs> by the security I think I walked in without signing in or something, giving my tracing. So they were they were calling me back to get my details of who I was. Uh, but I got away with everything by saying I was working for Offaly County Council, so uh, everything. <laughs> <that's fine. laughs> That'll always work. Say so you're working for the council. <laughs> but, uh, especially because if you go for with Gabby's work, if you go to the far side of the train station, um, in the silo, um, yeah. which uh -huh. Gabby wanted it in the silo, and mm. I remember asking Brendan, "Was that open to the public?" And Brendan was kind of like, "Well, no." It's, I think it's not really. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. I think uh, I just decided that we were going to put it there anyway. When I got there. So there, there's, yeah. a, there's a sign that kind of says for the public, I think, not to cross this yeah, that's right. yeah. thing and go under the silo. But uh, your work, is, it kind of forces people in there. And it really, really works if you go in and you're standing underneath this big structure. Ah. It's, yeah, uh, yeah it's, I would love to listen to the, I mean, of course, I have my um, reverberations with Talamo, basically with Talamo Dew, as you all know. But <laughs> um, um, yeah, for me, it's a pity that I can't be there and experience my work because I have been experiencing it here in, in, in my flat, which is quite boring. And um, and of course, my my whole work also when I do writing, it's it's not. I'm I'm not interested in, but I um, I prefer to launch 
not so much artwork than something that triggers other people to go into whatever their own head spaces or whatever their spaces are. Um, so I'm, I'm quite happy if when I, when I hear that you tell me that it, whatever, it provoked something in your mind or it provoked some memories because that it's not, it's not my job to give memories or to give, I just give a structure. I just give a, a trigger or a sound and, and often they are, while they are, you know, I'm not, I'm not a perfect recordist, um, but they do the job. Your pieces, each track is, is, is quite long. So in comparison to some of the other um, work, so it gets you to stay in those places, you know, for, for, a, for quite a long time. Yeah. Um, I, think, which... I think they also have a, have a tendency, even with regards to some of the other noises and the uses of the other noises, because of the space that you're in, there is that position you're put in kind of going, is this an in interfering with the sound that I'm listening to? Or is this the sound mm. that I'm listening to? And that yes. is, is very lovely because... I think obviously, again, if we were in a white cube gallery space and we were listening to it, we were like, okay, it's all the sound. But because of that kind of feeling of this contamination or this kind of cross-contamination between mm -hmm. the bustle of the station and, and the audio, but then that's also layered with little uh, trickles of, you know, more kind of organ organic tendencies and um, more surreal moments. Um, mm. But speaking of organic tendencies, um, Joseph, your piece is in uh, a very different space, really. Uh, there, it's not, there's not as much hustle and bustle, or um, certainly the footfall. Most of the people who would be visiting that space would be perhaps on a, on a leisurely walk. Or, uh, so Charleville, from Charleville Gates almost to, to, to Charleville Castle. Uh, tell us a little bit about your, your, your journey there. And actually, if you wouldn't mind introducing um, a little bit uh, about the PhD you're currently doing too. Sure. Well, the piece is, is kind of intimately connected, actually, to my PhD research. So maybe I should start with that. So yeah. um, I'm halfway through now. I've just completed my stage two transfer at Smart Lab UCD. Um, and uh, last year, when the call went out for uh, Sleeper Town, uh, I was, we, we were in the middle of the first lockdown here. And I was back in the UK, but, you know, um, and kind of locked down here. And, uh, but I'd already amassed at that point, I'd been going to the site in County Wicklow, the home of the Brabazon family, Kilruddery House and Gardens, which is the site of the research. So the research is called Listening to the Archives, you mentioned, and it is basically finding ways to uh, investigate a, a historic written archive. So the family had been living on that site um, since 1618. Mm -hmm. And they have records and everything, land deeds, all sorts of written and visual materials which express their history and their connection to that landscape. And so I'm using my sound and performance art practice to bring that to life for the public. And I was already using geolocation. So I started using geolocation in about 2017 on a project at a castle, actually, in the Lewis in East Sussex. Mm -hmm. Um, and again, he said, I worked with a kind of binaural technique. So I'd, I'd amassed, before the lockdown, I was thinking, well, how am I going to continue my research? You know, but basically because it's all about the, the, the basic methodology of it is basically being an artist in residence. So it's like, you know, how can you be an artist in residence when you can't be in residence anymore? <laughs> so finding ways to kind of haunt the site, if you like. So I've started developing this idea of kind of remote hauntings of this site through sound. And I had this recording, the, the last recording, some of the last recordings I made before the first lockdown were um, um, of Storm Brendan. So mm -hmm. beginning of 2020, uh, end of January, beginning of February, I believe it was. And I was in, in County Wicklow. And they have an area of the, it's, it's an 850 acre estate. It used to be a lot bigger, but it's still, it's still, a, and it's nestled within the Wicklow Mountains right next to Little Sugarloaf. And there's an area of it called the RD Wood. And I was interested in this area because there was a, uh, a tombstone there, um, or at least a commemorative stone, which marks the fact that this site used to be uh, the home of a monastery. So before 
the, the, so the ancestor of the Brabazon family, William Brabazon, was sent over by the English king, King Henry VIII, mm -hmm. um, in uh, 15, ooh, I should know this date off by heart, about 1535, I think, 1537. Um, the dissolution of the Irish monastery was basically he was in charge of that as the vice chancellor of Ireland. And for his uh, faithful service to the king, he was rewarded with the former St. Thomas's Abbey in the centre of Dublin in an area that's now called the Liberties. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And it came with a summer yeah, house uh, at Kilruddery <laughs> in County Wicklow. Mm -hmm. And so this was where the monks would sort of hang out in the summer, grow their hops and their medicinal herbs. Uh, it's thought that perhaps it was a retirement home. So it had been a religious site for many, many years. And it was that's all commemorated in this bit of the... Uh, of the wood, the RD wood, that actually isn't open to the public, but it's there. And I wanted to find this place and I found it and there'd be the aftermath of this storm. So I'd recorded these huge, high, huge trees in this area. They're, they're you know, they're, they're, I don't know, I mean, I, how high they are, but 80, I don't know, 80 meters high, whatever they are. They're, they're just, it's, it's, it's uh, and I was, I, so I sat in the middle of this thing recording this sound. And so I was thinking that this was somehow, I was drawn to these sounds as a basis for what I wanted to do for the Sleeper Town Commission and trying to think about how you displace sounds from one place to another. And I started thinking about the idea of a storm. So that, so that the, what was coming, if you like, at that time with COVID was a, was a sort of storm. Mm. It was a storm of the, you know, the virus, the infection, but it also, it was, it was a way that we, we, it was a way in for us to talk about climate change as well. We started to focus a lot, you know, it unleashed actually, COVID unleashed a lot of social changes, you know, mm -hmm. through, throughout this, you know, yeah. a lot of them very negative as we know. But also, I'd, so I was making these connections between COVID, between climactic changes, which is effectively what I was recording was these kind of, extreme weather events or at least the aftermath of it you know the mm. extreme weather events on the island of Ireland um, and I wanted to find a hook into it and I started looking into poetry and I found this piece of poetry that's uh, called well I, I can't remember its full Latin title but essentially it, it's by um, it finishes with the line circa renia tonat and it was um it was written, the, the, the author of it was, had witnessed the, uh, the death of Anne Boleyn, so one of the wives of Henry VIII. Yeah. So again, connected it into the research in that way. Yeah. And he'd written this poem about it thunders throughout the realm. That's what Sir Karenia Tonat means. And so this whole idea of something reverberating, an act mm -hmm. that we don't know where or how this thing, the echoes of this thing, mm -hmm. if you like, are going to play out. And so that's what I was interested in. And then placing it in the, the woods in Gory initially, looking at all those maps initially and trying to think of it as a walk. Mm -hmm. So designing all of these yeah. different echoes that you would come across so that the piece would unfold at the speed that the listener was walking rather yeah. than it being a single piece. So it, in, in that sense, it's interactive in that, you know, each listener depending on their speed and the way that they go through, you know, the, 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 the route where the thing will unfold at a different, in a different way for them. Mm -hmm. And I, I think one thing that was, that was quite um, powerful with regards to this as well was, um, you know, we, we, we had a trajectory. We knew we'd, 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 we had to walk in this direction yeah. in order to, in order to listen to it. And, Again, because of my familiarity with 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 Charleville and with Charleville Castle, um, as soon as the the, the poem by uh, Sir Thomas Watt had come in yeah. and this voice started to boom, was that your voice? By the way? It is my voice. It is yeah. your voice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. because yeah. Well, obviously I, I hadn't heard your voice before, but while you were speaking, I was like, wait a minute, yeah. it is. Mm -hmm. uh, but and it was very very beautifully done. But what it did was it it lended itself um, to us being capable of developing quite a meaty narrative around what this experience was. Um, mm. And I just think the, that that was, that was, you know, quite keenly, um, um, I suppose, developed. And I thought that that worked, worked really beautifully. Um, with regards to uh, you talking about this, the notion of 
the sound piece as haunting or mm-hmm. is a haunting of the of the place or the space. Do you think that stems from the research of, you know, being um, immersed in probably very, um, you know, old photography and, you know, over the course of research, especially with regards to archives, you know, people say, um, in an archive, no one is dead, you know, um, mm-hmm. because you're, you're getting to know these characters and these people for good or bad and that you're, if, you know, you're responsible for them, you know, re-emerging and it's through maybe the musicality or maybe, maybe the, 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 how you develop a soundscape. But do you feel there's a sense of responsibility in this haunting that you're kind of projecting towards us or? Well, yeah, there is, there, there is. I mean, it's, it's a contest. First of all, I have to say that, you know, Kulradri is very much what I would term a contested heritage site mm. in that, you know, it, it, it embodies in some way this entangled relationship between the English and the Irish, you know, it's yeah. put in in a very polite way, you mm-hmm. know. Um, and so it's, this is what I'm interested in the place. And this is the negotiation and the journey that I've had to go on with the Brabison family mm-hmm. to allow me to explore this in an open way mm-hmm. that, you know, really takes apart that history as much as possible and opens a lot of these stories out to the public, you know, and there, there have been some difficult negotiations. So I think that notion of haunting the archive, what, I was, what, I, what I've come up with in terms of the PhD is that the archive, in a sense, is haunted by its own past. Mm-hmm. And that it's my job, in, in effect, to bring these revenants or these spectres to life through immersive audio so that, um, I don't know, whether, whether there's kind of reconciliation available at the end of it somehow by by an openness, by, by, by allowing these stories to be told that are, you know, that some of them are uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, some of them are difficult stories to tell, but some of them are also celebratory. Some of them, um, you know, the reason that that house is still there um, and wasn't burnt to the ground during the civil wars and during the war for independence um, is a lot to do with the fact that the family have always cultivated excellent relationships with the local community. Mm-hmm. And so that whole contested notion of the Anglo-Irish and all of that stuff, they've, they've obviously managed that very well because they're still there and mm-hmm. they're still, you know, it's a popular attraction. They, they, they're a local employer. They've, you know, they, they've, they've contributed a lot to, you know, to, to set up charities, all of this kind of stuff. So there are two sides to this. So yes, the responsibility of that haunting, if you like, of bringing that, you know, being the kind of, audio seance kind of provider or whatever it is, you know, bringing this thing to life in this way is, and also being, being English, being an English artist, you know, dealing with Irish history um, and an Irish history that is, um, uh, yeah, that, that is still ongoing. You know, all the stuff around Brexit and everything that we've been going through, you know, that, 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 in, that, that there's creative problems for, our, for both of our nations, mm-hmm. I feel is part of all of this story as well. So there was a lot in there. I think and that text, that's the Thomas Wyatt text, I just felt was resonated for me. It, it thundered, you know, for me, if you like, you know, and that, that, that's, that's why it's at the centre of that piece. Mm. Mm. And I think it's what's really uh, wonderful about it as well, and certainly to listen, listen to you talk about, is um, how you can make this work that's very much of, of an archive and very much mm. rooted in history, um, also contemporaneous, um, mm. and how the work also spoke to and speaks to the, the, the current situation that we, were all, that we were all dealing with. And again, I think just when my, my encounter with Sleeper Town, I think I was just having quite an emotional day. <laughs> yeah. um, because we've all had those over the last uh, year and a half, I'd say. Yeah. But um, again, that, 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 certainly that booming voice and that uh, there was a, a real sense of presence within it. And um, with that... Uh, yeah, the, the, this notion of haunting, or indeed the notion of hauntology, or even Mark Fisher's notion of yeah. nostalgia, or exactly. um, all of these things really were really resonated with me from um, you know from from the perspective of um, yeah opening up something that might seem very niche, but your mm. capacity to open that up into and go into all these other realms and managing to do that through the sound and through what you were doing is, is quite the feat too. Um, I, can I jump in there? Brett? Yeah, I think it's, a, it's a yeah. good, 
listening to both Gabby and Joseph there, it's I think it gives a real good insight into what Sleeper Town actually is, in that it's more than the technology. The technology is just a, a way to access this work. Um, and I think like you can you can hear that really, and that's what Sleeper Town's about. It's about unearthing these uh, things of community. Uh, and that's why I, it connects, I think, a lot with the Museum of Everyone, because the, like Joseph and Gabby and Michael and you know, none of those visited Gori, none of those visited Tullamore. Um, so uh, these works, they're not really, they're not site specific. They're, they're more in essence, what it, they're site responsive in a sense. So I, like when I put out the open call, in, in many ways it came out of frustration in that I had tried a lot of things in Gori, tried to get a lot of events up and running and doors were shut. You had to get permissions for this. You had to get permissions for that. I wasn't talking to the right person um, things like that. And this was a way for me to open up my community in, in a sense um, and open up these places that I felt were also places that connected to many other towns and communities around Ireland, like the train station, uh, walking trails, um, the cemeteries, mm-hmm. public monuments, all these uh, places we have in different towns. And I think that's what, like, there was a lot of different applications uh, that came in. So it was quite difficult to pick what should go where, <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, because many people applied for the same places, kind of like what Gabby was saying, she would have liked to go to the cemetery as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, anyway, I just think that it, listening to both, it's, it's a really good, it's a really good insight that Sleeper Town isn't a sound walk. Mm. <laughs> you know, yeah. it, it's, it's more than that. It consists of sound walks. It consists of different types of installations. Um, I, it's called a mobile public art program, but really, um, it's probably quite unsure as to it, as to what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really yeah. like the idea that it's public art, though. I think that's one of the mm. things. I, you know, having used it technology for a while, to think of it as you know temporary public art commissioning, mm. a way to transform public space, but as you say, in a completely sort of COVID secure way. This Mm -hmm. is, you know, this is an individual experience, but you can do it in public. Mm -hmm. That's the thing, you know, so it connects you to the landscape whilst being a solitary activity. And that's what's so unique about it, I think. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Gabby, did you want to say something there? Yeah, what I like about the echo thing is, I think it's eerie to have this sound structure hovering locally mm-hmm. as a superimposed meta thing mm-hmm. that that interacts between the living or even dead bodies being in that place or transgressing this place mm-hmm. um, and then uh, yeah I think there's something ghostly I was I was, I was ghostly about it uh, which which I find interesting because uh, it does it does something. Uh, also, the actor that, that that you can move this ghost <laughs> locally and <coughs> um, it's also it works a bit like an organism with lots of tentacles sticking each in each other person's ear, a different tentacle, a tent- mm-hmm. tentacle. So so there's there's like there's these images that that uh, this. Um, technique actually evokes in in me, which that's why I find it. It's it's not that you put these things on your head and then you follow around, but as it is with the sound walk, but it, it's it's it is there. It's always there, even if we are not listening there or I, I'm not there. I know my piece is hovering somewhere around the, the train station, yeah. and uh, so it's it's more. I don't know. It's it's more like an organism. Um, a resonant organism that's that's mm. there in that in that location, uh, which is yeah, which is I, I think I think it's very intriguing. 
Yeah, I think you're right. And I think it's interesting even as we're, as we're, we're all discussing it and the ideas are kind of coming to the fore that this notion of kind of haunting, but also this notion of temporality and I suppose this um, idea of transition and mm -hmm. you know if whether it's a train station or whether it's looking at the the, the history um, of a particular place or area that you know we're uh, there's something quite um i don't know beautiful about us there's something very hum human about the considerations within within these mm -hmm. ideas that does make it feel um quite ghostly um but maybe that's the thing that that kind of s struck me so so much as well is that um, the invisibility and the, the ephemeral nature of it, um, whether it's steeped in history or whether it's the idea of, you know, how many people have stood on this platform and left the country over the years or how many, you know, all of these kind of things. Um, uh, also, Richard, your piece, P45, um, is an interesting one as well. Um, it has... I, when I when I walk when I walked into this to, to this space, I'll let you tell us where it is, etc. Um, I <laughs> I what I did have I was smirking a lot to my to myself, and um, I thought it was, it was quite a bright piece, quite clever. Uh, will you tell us a little bit about the idea behind P forty five and also um, its current uh, manifestation? Yeah, it's funny how you say it because I think when I was there with Joseph, Joseph. Uh, Gave a little giggle as well. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I didn't intend it to be funny, <laughs> but yeah, um, it it that also <laughs> it came out of um, okay. How far do I go into this? Uh, I okay. It, it began, I suppose, when I was fired from our own family business um, for. <laughs> <laughs> or um we're making art but, yeah <laughs> pretty much <laughs> so <laughs> after after a while i was then summoned um by the department of social protection um to attend for my informational session at Taurus Nua in gory uh for their new job path program uh, which it was so that was a good that was a few years ago um and for those who don't know what it is uh Job Path, I think, is a 12-month program. Um, it's, it's called a job activation program for unemployed people, uh, long-term unemployed. Job activation. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so, and basically, you are, you're kind of forced to go. You're threatened to go uh, in, in terms of that. If you don't engage um, with them, you, your, your dole essentially is going to be cut. So, and there's so many different arguments I've had with them down there uh, while I was on the program. So uh, that's kind of how it began and my frustrations with it because I didn't realize what I was actually signing um, when I was there. I, was, I listened to their introduction and then I was sent out to my personal advisor who was going to help me get a job. And I signed these two pieces of paper and suddenly I signed a 12 month contract that I had to participate in. Mm. Um, so the first thing I was asked when I was there was, um, what is your profession? So I said, artist. And the nice personal advisor that was there was flicking through their system and they were like, artist, artist, artist. No, no, we have Arctic driver. We have actor. I was like, no, an artist. We don't have that on the system. So I think I'm down as an archivist, I think was there. Okay. So I'm, um, yeah. So anyway, that was that. I eventually did get a, my own job and I was able to kind of not attend their sessions in different ways. But um, basically over the 12 months, I think my, I got my CV done. That was, it took 12 months to get a CV done. Um, and it was a really, really bad CV that was done. Um, and it certainly wasn't an art CV uh, or gearing towards any creative sector. Um, the, so it, that's basically where it came out of, because every day when you were there, you were told to job hunt. So you were on Jobs Ireland and you were constantly uh, looking up these jobs that were available. None of them I wanted to do. None of them I <laughs> were suitable. They wanted me to be like a plasterer or a factory worker, things that I had no experience in. Um, 
And that's where it stemmed from. So one day I just decided, right, I'm reading these enough that I'm going to just start recording myself reading them. Um, and I didn't really know there's so much more to the work that's not exhibited as well that I, mm. I want to develop. I'd love to work with kind of actors and I have different characters for all these people and uh, that I'd love to flesh out, but uh, that might be down the road. But um, yeah, so essentially to make the work, what I did was I made it at Taurus Nua in Gori and set up a binary recording system and recorded the people walking by me, uh, walking into Taurus Nua, walking out of Taurus Nua while I was um, calling out the, um, or reading, I suppose you could say, the the available job positions um, at their door. So that's how it um, happened. So yeah, at the moment, yeah. it's at Taurus New World, the Department of Social Protection on Tower Street. Yeah, Tower Street. Yeah. I, I think one of the reasons why I, I chuckled was because the kind of, un, the uncanny nature of it. I mean, I, I'd read like the, all of the little blurbs prior to kind of having experienced the works, but it was that, kind of misplaced familiarity I had with, with the thing. I was like, first of all, I thought it was some kind of, um, it reminded me of like some creative like announcement that might be in a supermarket or something. Or, But it was also felt really Big Brother-esque as well. There was something about it that was very intrusive. It's, um, but it, it's also the such a familiar narrative told in a very different way. And mm -hmm. also one of the, what the beauty of it, of it was, which I always th think the sexiest thing about art is if you're like, you know, encountering something, you're like, but what is this? You know, what is this? Is this art? Is this something else? Is this? And I felt myself listening kind of further. And then you realize that actually, you know, the current system and the system that you're talking about is under huge scrutiny. And it is very much about feeling um, outside of these kind of, you know, uh, the system. And for us not to um, feel like we, um, I suppose, are represented. And even your description of that, the word artist isn't even there. I mean, I mean, in Ireland, there's so it many... It might be now, I'm not sure. Yeah, but yeah it may, it maybe, but, but it doesn't yeah. subtract from your experience of that moment. Mm. Um, so it, uh, it, is, it, was narr it's, it was narrative strong, but it also, you know, even like at the time, there were still people coming in and out, you know? <laughs> I was mm -hmm. like, what did, they, mm -hmm. what did the, these poor unfortunate people just have to listen to, like for the past 20 <laughs> minutes, while I'm just listening to, to this, you know? Mm. And, you know, I'm... It's like that whole idea that you, you, you it's the, yeah, you, 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 it, it lets you see the woods for the trees, especially where it's situated, but you see people probably experiencing this. And I think know? for me as well, usually the tourist Nua centers, they're not, they're done up and they're marketed really well. And, you know, especially the Bunagori. And I remember walking into it the first time and I went, oh my God, this is like a really cool modern setup that's, going to be good, <laughs> you know, um, and help people. Um, yeah, I was totally wrong. Um, but, and also, I, they're not usually places that members of the public would just walk to, to you know, so you, you can't just walk into a tourist new, you have to be summoned there to go. And then there's a lot of reasons why you can't even enter when you get there. Like, if you arrive with a child, they're not going to let you in. And um, it's really... Um, strange it's a really strange thing and then also a lot of the probably maybe i should say this a lot of the people <laughs> that are there when i was there anyway they they were a lot younger than me yeah. uh with no experience of working in the arts or the creative sector who were advising me on how to get a, a full-time job yeah. and for them their their real role is you have to they have to get you a full-time position 30 hours uh, or more a week for for their company to be paid so once i signed the contracts they're paid so much and then once they get us a full-time job they're, they're paid more by by the government so it's a lot of it's a lot of um taxpayers money that goes into it and as far as i know um this system uh joseph i think was in the uk as uh, uh originally and i i've a funny i could be wrong on this but i have a funny feeling that they 
it didn't work in the UK, <laughs> so we came to Ireland. It's the same company. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, yeah. we're always exporting things to you. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but anyway, like that, it's an it's an ongoing conversation I have with them at the moment because I, I ended up putting in a uh, a request under GDPR. So it took them nearly a year to get all my details that they have on me. So I can reach her. It's like, and I've eventually got a folder like this size that was sent to me um, with information on myself. Um, because we, I got sick of them texting me and trying to say, oh, can I speak to your new employer? And like, no, <laughs> you know, things like that. It's just, wow. it's just like, now, to be honest, I was looking if I was able to handle it and I did get a job and I was able to kind of get away from mm. it. But there's a lot of people I hear um, are stuck. Mm. You know, stuff, I, so. I think as well, I mean, that, that it's extraordinarily intrusive, isn't it, um, into any individual's, any individual's life. Uh, but certainly, I think in the, with regards to having uh, experienced it within the, in the soundscape that you had, had developed, it did, you know, you know, really kind of lend itself to, I suppose, looking at the re repetition of this narrative and the the use uselessness of it you know um because the art you know again with art i mean art can be very useful and it can also be completely useless i mean it, you know the, the, that's, <laughs> the, that's the beauty of you know it being very subjective i mean you know there's always times where we're like going why are we why why am i getting so stressed about this Nobody mm. cares. Why do I care so much? And then there's other times where this is really important. I know I need to do this. This needs to be finished. And again, that can be temporal because we're like, I have a deadline. Then you're like, okay, I have to, I have to do this. Or we have a Zoom. Okay, I need to be articulate about my practice. I like to make sound art, but why do I have to talk about it? Who cares? Uh, but I, it's about that kind of network. And I think that network of artists within Sleeper Town and these quite keen conversations uh, as um, viewers or listeners or members um, of an audience that we always have a tendency to join, join the dots and to develop a narrative ourselves, even with the, with the mm. smallest crumb. Um, you, all you need to do is find the next one and then your, your, your brain has done all the work for you. Um, so I think that Sleeper Town has, you know, really not only expanded, you know, ha my perspective on how sound art can interact with landscape or how it can transform, you know, quite a familiar terrain for me. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also, yeah, taught me as well that from not having a, these visual cues that internally we all have this capacity to, you know, to develop our own narratives and to, you know, invest in uh, the moment that we're in, because it very centers you in the moment when you're listening, mm -hmm. as opposed to, you know, distracts you from uh, which, which visual art um, can do. So I'd like to just say a huge thank you to all of you for joining us here at the Museum of Everyone. And oh, super being, pleasure. Yeah, no, yeah, honestly, it's been such a pleasure. And I, I feel like um, upon, you know, re-encountering the work over the next week or so as well, um, I, I look forward to, to having heard your voices as well. Uh, uh, so Gabby, Joseph and Richard, thank you so much for joining us here at the Museum of Everyone and thank you for being so open about your practices and indeed for taking part um, in the project which stays open until the 4th of September. Um, in Tullamore County, Offaly, um, and details are on the Museum of Everyone website and also at sleepertown.com. Thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, Brendan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.